Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to go over a tool called extrude and talk about using a spline to extrude an object in three dimensions. All right, so what I'm going to do is in this uh, view, I'll go to multiple viewports and I'm just going to go to the top view. And same thing I did in the um, in the lathe tool, I'm going to go ahead and bring a background in. So in this case, I'm going to do configure, go to back, I'm going to find an image, and this I'm just going to do a key bottle, a key uh, chain bottle opener, if you've seen these before. And this is just going to be a quick guide that I'm going to trace this, extrude it out, and then talk a little bit about how to manipulate it further. All right. So what I'm going to do with this now that I'm in the top menu is just going to grab my spline tool. So I'm going to spline pen. Uh, again, I like to kind of start with linear. You can go ahead and work with the um, curves as you like. Uh, so the way that this would work normally is you would, you know, start at a point here, start at a point here. You can click and drag, hold it down and start to shape your piece. Oh, I can do it this way. Why not? I'll just click and drag as I'm going all the way around the object click, drag, hold, make that curve how you want it to make it, and um, try to fit the form accordingly, right? Uh, the tricky part is sometimes you need to make it in, to zoom in while you're drawing, but in this case, I'm just gonna try to go all the way around the object, and I'll edit it a little bit later um, as I go. Okay, getting closer here. I think the key to remember is that if you don't want a sharp edge, definitely click and drag so you get those handlebars to come up. Now, I'm not ending at the other point. What I'm going to do is instead click on the spline and go down here where it says close spline, and that will end the spline for you. All right. So if I look at this in this view, perspective view, you can see that I have the tool. You know, it's not too bad. I did an all right job rendering that. I think I'm going to keep it. I would definitely go in. Uh, and tweak things to make it a little bit more concise. Why don't we do that in a few areas? So I'll go to my top view again. I'm gonna zoom in really closely and I'm just gonna select the move tool here, okay? And then you can click on each point and just start to arrange it in a better orientation. So you can move them to make the curves better and you can also drag the handlebars to make the curve more to your liking, right? So I'm pretty happy with that top part so far. If this were a longer tutorial, I would definitely go in and tweak some things, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm just gonna keep it as is. Now, one thing I do need in this is a hole for the um, chain to go through, right? So the way that we can do that is actually, I'm gonna go to the top view again, and I'm just gonna grab a prefrat excuse me, prefab spline. Here, I'm just gonna grab a circle, all right? Uh, the circle is gonna come in humongous. So if I zoom out, it's gonna be this massive thing. You can kind of see it there in the white. I'm just gonna scale this down. Let's just try like five centimeters and see what that is like. And drag this over, drag it down and see what we got. Five is definitely way too small. So we'll scale it up to maybe 20. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm just gonna make a hole in the middle of this thing, something like that. All right, now uh, this is not gonna extrude properly in this orientation because these are two different splines and if I bring two into the extrude, it's gonna, um, so let me just show you what I mean by that. I'll take this extrude, right? Click and select it, drag the spline into it and then automatically you should see um, the extrusion. Oh, I missed it. There we go. Bring it in there. Okay, so there you go. So here you can see that it takes that and extrudes it out, right? So that's the object. Now if I put the circle in, it's not going to work, right? It just does the circle. Only the circle or the spline. If I put the circle in the spline, that doesn't work either. So I'm going to take them both out, okay? And then I'm going to select them both. And here you can go to your spline menu and go down to conversion and do connect objects and delete, right? By doing that, we're making the whole thing a hierarchy of one spline. And if I put that now in the extrude again, you're going to see we get the whole, okay? So if you want a negative space, you have to combine your splines together, both the positive and the negative shapes, and go to spline, conversion, and I do current state 
or I'm sorry, connect objects and delete. So it doesn't keep the hierarchy of the other splines. I don't really need those, okay? So connect objects and delete and then place it in. All right, so at any time you could always go to your individual points on the spline and move it around and change the object, right? So that's the power of having this configuration as such. You can always edit it later. Now a few options. For this, it's too sharp of an edge. I need a little bevel on the top to make it look more realistic, right? So when I click on the extrude, what I'm gonna look for are these things called caps. And for this object, I want the caps to be the same on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna, this separate bevel controls, I'm just gonna have that check off, right? Now I can choose different types of bevels. If I increase this a little bit, you'll see that the object is getting a bevel on the edges, right? and it's cutting into the actual object. So that's round. We could do curve, which does a kind of a cut out of it. We can do solid, uh, which if we increase a little bit, it's not really working out. I'm not sure what solid is actually. <laughs> I know step though. Step gives you multiple different steps. So we make this just like one step right? You just get that little lip or that edge, right? In this case though, and then you can increase it. If you wanted to have separate controls, you could click on separate controls and you could have a different one for the top and the bottom. But I think I want them both to be the same on either side. Definitely for this one though, to make it look like that aluminum thing, I'm going to use round and then I'm going to have, notice with one segment, it's just an edge, right? It's just like a 45 degree angle. If I increase the segments, I get more of a curve. So I would say for this, I want at least three, and I'm just gonna increase this a little bit bigger to make it more round like that. All right, so there you go. I have quickly modeled a uh, keychain um, bottle opener. Uh, last thing to note is that with the, um, under the extrude tab, under object, you can increase the offset, and offset has to do with the depth, right? So you can make this really thick or really thin, depending upon how you want it to be. It seemed like 100 was a pretty good default number for us to use. Um, all kinds of different things you can extrude using, um, using the splines. So you can draw your own splines, and don't forget there are a whole bunch of um, shapes that you can use in here as well. So you know, if you wanted to extrude a star quickly, you just bring in that spline, you bring in the extrude, you put the star in the extrude, and there you have an object, right? And again, with the caps, you can control the overall uh, shape and dimension of that um, to give it more depth and dimension, right? So if I make this really bigger, there we go. So there you go. That's the basic um, uh, modeling with extrude. This works with Illustrator files and all kinds of other things. We can go into more details later, but for now, this gives you a basic start of using the extrude tool.